So the topic for week two would be the nature of water, and we are going to have a little review on organic chemistry. But take note, um, the sole focus of week two is the nature of water. And as for the organic chemistry, we will just have a short review on that one since it's been already introduced to you in your organic chem. So let's start. So the objective for today's um, lesson would be that you should be able to know the properties of water as well as the use of water in the body of a living organism, especially the human body. Right? That's the main objective of today's lesson. So let's start the nature of water. Now, it's a common knowledge that one water molecule can be attached to another water molecule via this one, the hydrogen bond. And I guess that is already a common knowledge for you since you've already had a review on, on the chemical bond and bonding specifics last week. All right, so just take note that one water molecule can be attached to another water molecule using this one, the hydrogen bond. Water as a good solvent. So when we say solvent, it is the substance that is able to, able to dissolve, right? A specific solute. Water is a good solvent for charged compounds, right? So when we say charged compounds, these are the substances that when um, exposed to water or suspended to water, they're able to somewhat have charges in their molecules. For example, sodium chloride or your table salt, when suspended to water, they are able, or the ions, some sodium, Chloride are able to dissociate to sodium and chloride. The positive charge side of water is usually surrounded by charged molecules, more specifically, negatively charged molecules, because take note, opposite attracts, right? So, for example, this is the positive side of water. Since it is positive, it'll be attracted to negatively charged uh, molecules or substances. Whereas the negatively charged part or side of water will be attracted to positively charged molecules. Right, so again, opposite attracts. So that's why. For example, when sodium and chloride is suspended in water, due to the fact that when sodium and chloride suspends to water, they dissociate into ions such as sodium and chloride ions, ang positively charged ninga ion haposta na na siya ma attract sa negatively charged side ni water whereas the negatively charged ion can be easily um what um attracted to the positive side of water that's why when you put sodium chloride or acin sa tubig dasig lang matunaw ang 
sodium chloride or acine sa tubig. That's because sodium chloride is a charge compound. That is, it carries a charge, especially when it is suspended to water. Let me erase this one first. So the charges associated with these molecules form hydrogen bonds with water, surrounding the particle with water molecules. So for example, this is, you know, a charge compound, charge meaning a compound, another charge compound. And we also have a water molecule here, a water molecule here, and another water molecule. Uh, let's add another one, and another one here, and yes, did I forget? So guys, ano matabo if a specific charge compound is exposed to water? So remember that water is composed of water molecules. Malama, right? And we already know that charge compounds have positive or negative side. Positive, negative side, positive and negative side. Same thing with water. Water can basically, I mean water has positive and negative side also. Positive and negative, positive, negative. Right, positive and negative. Now, and we already know that, you know, the positive side of water can be easily attracted to the negative side of the compound. Whereas the negative side of water can be easily attracted to the positive side of compound. So, ma-attract na na ang positive to negative, uh, I mean the positive side of water to negative side of the compound, the negative side of water to the positive side of the compound. So, kung may ara na tag may na-establish na kita nga ano gani, nga bonding between sa charges sa compound and the water molecules, Right. So, amun siya ang matabo. You have your compound. Guys, okay. amun siya ang matabo ha. You have the compound. And these charged compounds are surrounded by water molecules. Why? Because in the first place, may ara sila charges sa ilang a surface or sa ilang a structure to which the water molecules attach. Um, ang attachment or ang bond in a form between, you know, the water molecule and the compound would be hydrogen bonds. So in this sense, the molecules of a specific compound are dispersed in water or suspended to water. Water is therefore referred to as a solvent, which is a substance capable of dissolving another polar molecules and ionic compounds. So ionic compounds are actually your charge compounds because they carry charges in their molecular structure. Polar compounds again are substances that have high solubility in water. So you have here a picture, you know, showing two molecules, this, the chloride and the ion molecules being surrounded by 
water molecules. As guys, this is a water molecule, H2O, dua ka H, isa ka O. So, this is basically a one, sorry, a water molecule. Are isaman ka water molecule. Are isaman ka water molecule, H2O. The re, water molecule, water molecule, and another water molecule. Now, what can you observe sa molecular formula sang aton niya sodium and chloride? The way they are being written or represented. Diba? The two of them have a charge. For example, with sodium, it has a 1 plus. A charge. Positive 1. A charge. Whereas si chloride has a negative one in charge. So what do you call a specific ion that carries a positive charge? It is a cat ion. Just a review. How about the chloride? The chloride is carrying a negative charge, which means chloride is what type of ion? It is an anion. Right? Next, since sodium and chloride carry, you know, both of them carry a charge, that means the two of them are what we call charge particles or molecules. And remember, Water can be able to form hydrogen bonds with charged particles. Again, water can form hydrogen bond with or hydrogen bonding with charged particles. So in this sense, water now can be able to form that specific hydrogen bonding with sodium and chloride. Kinga agani, they are charge particles is sodium and chloride are charge particles so that's why we makita kamunga h2o molecules surrounding chloride and sodium now um water molecule again can be attracted to charge particles right and ang, ang bonding na matabo would be between the opposite charges Positive and negative, negative or positive. So in this case, since chloride is a negatively charged molecule or particle, ang maattract chloride would be the positive charge side sang imo nga water. Now, between hydrogen and oxygen, sino sa ila ang gakeri sang positive charge? See? See hydrogen atom, kh plus negative, I mean positively charged na siya, di ba nga, nga atom. Whereas the oxygen is of negative charge na siya. Alright? So basically, the positive charge sa yung water molecule is that of the two hydrogen atoms. And the two hydrogen atoms, since positively charged sila, kaya nila mag-form bond sa ka-opposite nila nga charge. Sino ka-opposite nila nga charge? Ang negative na charge ni, ni chloride. So that's why you can see in the picture two hydrogen atoms of a specific water molecule is, or sorry, are attracted to the chloride ion. Same thing with other water molecules, Ario. Same thing with this specific water molecule, ang iya nga duha ka hydrogen atoms are attracted to chloride because again, opposite attracts. Hydrogen atom is a positively charged uh, particle whereas chloride is a neg negatively charged molecule or particle. So, opposite attracts. Next, panasan Next, since your sodium is a positively charged 
um, ion or particle natural ang maka-attract lang niya kay sodium would be the negative side of your water. Now, what is the negative side of water? It's the oxygen atom. Is the oxygen atom again is carrying a negative charge. Siya yung may ara nga negative charge. So, malamang siya na iaamangin attracted sa ka-opposite niya na charge which is the sodium. Because again, si sodium positively charged. Ang oxygen ni water is of negative charge. So, opposite attracts, that makes your sodium and your oxygen being attracted to one another or to each other. And that also happens to the other water molecule. Ang oxygen sa isa ka water molecule, ma-attract man kay sodium. Ang oxygen sa isa pagig ka water molecule, ma-attract man kay sodium. And that is how that is how particles that are suspended uh, sorry, that is how charged particles in water are being separated from one another. Pwede mas separar si chloride from sodium because of the fact that la inay nga charge ang ginaatake um, sa kada particle. Now, what kind of salt naghalin ang imo nga electrolyte? Oh, sorry, what kind of salt? or compound naghalin ang imo nga sodium ion and chloride ion sa sodium chloride imo nga salt table salt right sodium chloride is a salt more specifically a table salt so sodium chloride again is a salt compound it is a charge compound once you expose um yeah, your sodium chloride to water, the sodium and chloride ions will dissociate from one another, which means mabulagay si sodium kag si chloride. Amoni guys matabo. Your chloride will be separated from sodium. Next, the water molecules will then surround the chloride and other batch of so sorry, other batch of water molecules will then surround man ang imo nga sodium ion so sa tubig actually guys nagimbutan mo asin microscopically hindi <laughs> ba microscopically but um in reality amo giling katabo no the chloride portion of your salt sang imo nga asin is being uh, surrounded by you know water molecules and the sodium part sang imo nga asin is also surrounded by other set of water molecules. Oil doesn't mix with water because oil is a type of lipid. And lipid compounds are considered as non-polar. When you say non-polar molecules, they cannot interact with water. And if they cannot interact with water, that means that they have low solubility in water. Hindi isla matunaw, hindi isla mamix sa water. Nonpolar molecules are also known as hydrophobic molecules. When we say hydrophobic, it means water hating. Hydro, water, phobic, fear. Right? Water hating or be fierce as a water. That means these specific molecules tend to what they tend to be located away from water kapalayon sila guys sa tubig kay hindi man sila ka form hydrogen bonding so water molecules so for example this one drawing tap 
Water molecules, when they somehow are exposed to nonpolar molecules or hydrophobic molecules, they will form what we call hydrogen bonding with water molecules lang. Pareho lang nila nga water molecules ang bandingan nila. Hmm. Hindi na nila pagsapakon ang nonpolar molecules. Why? Because hindi man sila ka-form hydrogen bonding sa nonpolar molecules. Because nonpolar molecules don't have that specific charges sa ilang surface. Wala sila may may uh, charges, sobrang charges sa ilang surface. So, kung wala sila charges sa surface nila, wala kada, you know, wala something na maatrakan ang water sa ila. Okay, remember, your water has positive and negative charge. Kung dra mismo si mga charges, nag-form ang hydrogen bond. Pero kung ang molecule na kung sa diin na expose si water, non-polar, wala siya guys sang charges si iya nga structure hindi siya ka-form sang hydrogen bond with water. So, ang kakatabo, amo lang ni. Ang water molecule ni isa, pangitao niya lang isa ka water molecule, ma-form sila sang hydrogen bond. Right? So, form hydrogen bonding with water molecules, hindi nila pagsapakon ang iban nga molecule nga inatawag ba non-polar. Okay, wala na sila tapikan dira sa non-polar molecules. So, ang gakatabo, those non-polar molecules tend to what? Tend to be located in one area lang. Do kumbaga, they are forced to be close to one another. Kita mo ni sa picture ng drawing ko. Nan. So, in this case, the non-polar molecules tend to be concentrated in one area wherein all of these nonpolar molecules are forced to be so near to one another. Sila lang niya ang mag-ulupuray. Whereas the nonpolar molecules, sorry, whereas the polar molecules, such as the water molecules, tend to form that specific bonding around the nonpolar molecules. Forming what we call a cage-like structure. Ito, blaw sa akong gindrawing, doon naka-cage ang imo nga non-polar molecules. Kag ang cage nga ina is formed by water molecules that are being bonded to one another. And the cage-like structure is known as clathrate. Clathrate na ang tawag. Right? So now you have a more presentable you know, um, representation of clathrate. So, guys, this one, this specific cage-like structure, are, 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 are. That specific cage-like structure is known as clathrate, right? And in the middle of, you know, the cage-like structure or the thing that is being caged inside of that clathrate is your non-polar molecules or hydrophobic molecules. Now, water has the specific two properties, which I guess you are already familiar with. Water is a polar molecule, which means, magamaka polar molecule, one end of it is slightly positive and the other end or side is slightly negative. So water has that specific characteristic. It has a positive side and a negative side. That's why water can be able to form attraction or bonding with charged particles. Next, water is highly cohesive, which means it can be able to form bonds or attraction for molecules of the same kind. Right? So, we already know that one water molecule can form 
bonding or attraction with another water molecule. And in this sense, water is establishing cohesion, or that is water is establishing that specific cohesive property.